Hi, this is Meghnath. In this module, we will learn about recursion in C language. So in the previous module, we learned about functions and how do we declare a function, how do we define a function, and how do we call a function. So we learned it in the module 18. So in this module, we learn about the concept of recursion. So the recursion means a function calling itself repeatedly until a specified condition is satisfied. So that's called recursion. I repeat once again, a function calling itself is called recursion. A function calling itself is called recursion. Now let's see an example you will understand very clearly. Let's see this now. Now to understand it clearly, so this is module number 19. So now I'll create file, new empty file and I'll save it. I'll save the file and give just a file, give the file name as 19. Dot recursion example one. Now first what we'll do is we'll write the simple code for factorial using a function which we have done in the previous module. I'll do it very quickly. So include stdiv.h include conivo.h wide main and I'll just write here int n is equal to five comma i comma yeah now I'm going to find factor of phi so I'll create a function so first I need to declare the function so because I want to find factorial the function will return an integer int factorial and it requires two parameter one parameter called number int n now that's called function declaration now we need to define the function so int factorial int n and for storing result, I need one variable. Int result is equal to one. For storing, for looping purpose, I need one variable. So for i is equal to one, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus. And I'll write here, result is equal to result star i. And I'll return result. So we're done. So this is called function definition. And this is called, sorry, this is called function definition, yes. And this is called function declaration. Now I'll call the function. So how do we call it? Printf factorial of percentile d is percentile d, comma, n, comma, function call factorial of n. Okay, so now we are calling the function. Now this is a normal way of calling a function and this function will have a loop, it will iterate it, and then it will return the result once it's done. So now here we are calling the function. So this will work fine. Let's say this, I'll save it and I'll build it. There are no errors and warnings, let's run the code. I can see here, we're getting the answer, factorial of five is 120. So this is a normal way of doing with the function. Now what we can do is, I can call this function once again inside the function. So let's see how to do that, right? So I'll just write if n is equal to zero, if n value reaches zero, I want to return one, else return factorial of factorial of n minus one. Okay, now, now see here, in this function, I'm calling the same function again. This is a function definition, and I'm calling the same function inside the function, and this concept of calling a function within the same function is called recursion. Recursion is a process of calling a function within the same function that's called recursion. Now let's try to understand this. Now let's take for example, now n value is four. Now what happens now? n value is not zero, it'll call four minus one. So in this case, we need to change it. Just a little bit change n star. So I have to find, I have to multiply the number with again factor of n minus one. So I've added just n star, right? So now see what happens now. So I'll write here in um, first time, let's take n values four. So I'll write here four into factorial of three. Now again, this will call what? This will call three into. This will call again here. This time this value is three. Now this time three into factorial of three into factorial of two. This will call again. This time it will be two into factorial of one. 
This will call again the same function 1 into factorial 0. Now what is happening when n value is 0? It's written 1. So this 1 into 1 will come back here and 2 into 1 will come back here. 3 into 2 will come back here. 4 into 6 will go here. So now 24 will be the output. Now a function calling itself repetitively until a fun specified condition is satisfied is called recursion. Now let's see this. So this function is getting called. Now first let's let's explain once again. n value is 4. Now 4 into factorial of 3. Now again the same function is called. Now this time this is calling with 3. So again it's not 0. So 3 into factorial 2. So 3 into factorial 2. Now again this is called 2 into factorial 1. Again this is called 1 into factorial 0. Now what is factorial 0? Fa when n value is 0 it's not calling the function again. It's just written 1. So this 1 will be written here. So now 1 into 1 is 1. This will be written here 1. And this 2 into 1 is 2. This will be written here 2. And 3 into 2 is 6. This will be written here. Now 6. So 6 for the 24 that will be written to here this function call. So that's how recursion works. So just keep in mind a function calling itself repetitively until a specified condition is satisfied. So that specified condition is this here. So until this condition is satisfied this function is getting called itself repetitively. And that is called a recursion. The good thing about recursion is that the variables, number of variables here, we don't have result variable, we don't have i variable. So number of variables have come down drastically. So there is only one variable in this function as of now, the only one variable that is n value. We're just using n value here, no other variables in this. So now we are calling this function and this function calls itself repeatedly and it stops when n value is 0 and then and the data will be backtracked and you'll get the output as 24 and if it is 5, you'll get 120. If it is 6, you'll get 720. So this is an example of recursion. Let's save it and build it. Now you can see here, no errors, no warnings, let's run the code. You can see factor of 5 is 120. Now let's write here um, n value as 6. Now let's save it. Now I'm expecting the answer as um, n value 6. 6 means it should be ideally 720, right? Let's run the code. You can see the previous output. Let's build it. So build it and run the code. You can see it's printing 720. So I hope you are clear with functions and um, recursion. So in the next module, we will learn about arrays in C language, which is very important topic. And we are going to learn arrays in the next module. So hope you are clear with functions and recursion. See you in the next module. Thank you.